Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in the room. This is Christine Horn. This is an episode of Actors Daily Bread. Well, actually, it's Actors Daily Bread slash HBA Spotlight. This is an exclusive interview for our Hollywood bound actors community. Horn, professional working actors of 20 plus years and a life and career coach for actors just like you. I'm always looking for amazing actors, professionals, industry people to come talk to my community, you guys, because I want to make sure that we are getting everything that we need to be amazing and to thrive in this community. If this is your first time watching or listening, I want to welcome you to all my replay watchers who will watch this later. What's up, replay watchers? Love you guys and my listeners, my replay listeners. What's up? Oh, I'm pumped because so today I have a special guest. Her name is Monica Plant. She's an actor just like you, but she is also a certified health coach, confidence creator, and wellness expert for actors. And I invited her today because we re we connected and we had a really good vibe and had a really good conversation just about the importance of uh, morning rituals, you know, like being set up for success for your day, for your career. So I invited her here. So please welcome her. But let's dive in because we have a lot to talk about. Let me bring Monica to this stage. Hey, Monica. Hey. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. Thank you for being mm -hmm. here. Welcome mm -hmm. to the Hollywood Bound mm -hmm. Actors community. Thank you for having me. I just, well, I adore you and your energy. And oh. I just, I'm also super passionate about what we're talking about today and, you know, helping my fellow actors and this community just to feel better, do better, perform better, and ultimately book more work. I love it. I love it. Y'all, don't be fooled. I'm playing around with these buttons. <laughs> I like that. We're like... <laughs> Listen, so um, thank you everybody for, for watching. Be sure to leave your comments. And if you're, whether you're watching this now, the replay or listening on the podcast or on YouTube, Monica has shared some amazing links that you can grab some good, good stuff. We're going to talk about it, but just so you know that that is there. So let's dive. Let's just start fresh. Cause I know how this goes. Typically, sometimes my audience likes to, they shine in the beginning and then they have questions at the end. What's your journey before we even talk about how you got into coaching and career and health and wellness. Let's talk about you, Monica, the actor. How, where did you grow up? Where did you start? How did you become an actor? <laughs> well, I grew up in Northern California in the okay. Bay Area. And I started performing actually at a young age. I was part of the San Jose Children's Musical Theater at a young age. My first, my very first play was the music man at this amusement park called Great America. I don't even think it's there anymore. But that like got me, I was like, it was a friend of mine was doing it. And she's like, hey, I'm doing this play, you should come. They need someone for chorus. And I was like, okay, I had no idea what I was doing. But I got to be the one kid who like comes out on stage and is like turned the wrong way. So everyone totally laughed. And I kind of was like, oh, I could, I kind of like this. <laughs> I kind of like this. So then I, you know, I got into the San Jose Children's Musical Theater and I did that for many years, but was also a dancer. I was a ballet dancer for many years and then I was a competitive ice skater. And then I moved to San Francisco from the Bay Area and um, just started doing it there and eventually, you know, did commercials and independent films and stuff like that. But it was like, if I really want to do this, I need to move. Okay. Um, because this was like a hundred years ago. So it wasn't like you could be everywhere. There was no self-tape situation. <laughs> there was no self-tape situation happening. Right. So I eventually moved to LA and that here I am, you know. What's been your main thing that you focused on here in LA? Uh, um, again, just in the actor world. TV. Yeah, definitely TV. And that's sort of been where I've made more of a name for myself too. And it's been awesome. I mean, I love it. Actually, that's why we're all here. I love taking people on a journey, telling a story and, you know, uh, taking people on a ride. What's your favorite career highlight? Just, it doesn't matter if it's the biggest role, but your personal, we all, those of you watching yeah. and 
we all have that thing that like it didn't pay me anything, but I met George Bush, like something like yeah. that. <laughs> that was the major yeah. thing in my life. But I have two really because you know, one of them was me producing my own work, which, you know, ended up garnering like a ton of awards and really shifted my casting, which was what I really needed it to do. Mm-hmm. So I I had an idea for a short film and I went to my old producing partner and he wrote it and then he directed it and I produced it and did the whole thing. And it really, I was doing a ton of comedy, which I love, but I was like, I want to be a leading lady. This is crazy. Like I want, I want to do leading lady stuff. So that's what this short really did was it shifted my casting and I ended, it went to a ton of festivals. I won a ton of awards for it. And then it really opened things up in a different way in my career. You know, I don't even know, like, I think a lot of people saw it, but I don't even think it was that it was just the energy Find of it. what I was doing. It was the energy. Oh, yourself. Yeah. 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 And then that le- led to sort of my my favorite thing that I've done is, is just my stint on Nashville. I was um, on Nashville for a year. Yeah. I was a uh, Nashville vibes. I mean, I had something about the hair, the bangs <laughs> dolls up on Nashville. So <laughs> funny. Well, you guys, this is something really cool for your tribe to know because originally this, I did, you guys, I have had a, um, I've had reps in the Southeast for, almost 15 years. So way before it was like a thing to be able to do it, I, w- I had somebody out there and um, they were repping me out there and in Los Angeles. And so I just was really lucky. This role came up. It was never even offered in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And originally it was just supposed to be like one or two episodes and it was a small role. And then by the third episode, they upped me to top a show and then they wrote me in for the whole rest of the season. Yes. Come so, on, Tony. Hold on. Yeah, my, this is how we. I, and forgive me if I get excited. If you see my upper lip sweating, that's an old. <laughs> okay, but that is huge. I share these stories all the mm-hmm. time um, because it's oftentimes we can get this small audition or it's just a couple of lines. And mm-hmm. but it's moments like that where when it's when it's yours, it's yours. But then you never know what it can turn into. You show up and you're just the, the one, and they're like, "We need more of this." Especially television, they're, oh, they're yeah. really as they go as they go oh. from streaming, where they're really trying to flush out the whole season at once. Mm-hmm. But every product, like network, they're writing as they go, so you can get dropped and you can get added real quick, big time. And I will tell you, you know, and I'm sure you've talked about this. Like there was, you know, obviously it just made me feel really good because it knew that I was bringing my A game. I was professional. I was easy to work with. I was like, you know, two takes and done, you know, um, and it was also just that I had great rapport with the person I was working one of the series regulars. I was his love, new love interest. And we just had great chemistry. I really hit it off with all the makeup, hair people, wardrobe people. And I'm telling you, those are your people. (laughs) Because not only are they responsible for all of this, but they have the direct ear of oh, the, yes. writers, the writers, the showrunner. Oh, yeah. yes. So if you're a snob or you're difficult to work with or deal with or anything like it's going straight from the makeup trailer, straight from the wardrobe trailer, right to their ear. Right, because they have meetings at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. That's why, like at the end of the ship, end of call it a ship, end of my sh- a show, I'm there with like, here's a thank you gift. I'm mm-hmm. so appreciative of everything that you've done. Oh, totally. I was totally. Totally. It's about relationships. On Clubhouse last night, we were talking. I was in a room. Actors, shout out to the Actors Connection with Gail Jackson and Tabitha McNeil, and we were talking about creating. Uh, uh, amazing relationships that can really last. And it's these type of things that you're talking about. I I love that. So all my Nashville fans, go back and watch. Do you remember what season you were on? I was in all of season three. Okay. Okay. So those of you Nashville fans, go ahead and watch season three. You'd be like, that was her. So that's her. That's four. So, you know, like many of us, you know, all of us, we're grown. Most of y'all listening, ninety percent of y'all grown, right? And you know, we're, we have to we have to pay these little things called bills. The lights, we like lights, we like power, we like yeah. gas, eat. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I'm bougie that way. I like to eat. 
So we all have different things we do for jobs or for fulfillment or that interests us. We have hobbies outside of acting. So you ended up becoming, we have that in common. I don't know if we talked about this. Yeah, we totally talked about it. I started as a health coach in my in my in- entrance into the world of coaching. And so you you turned into a, a certified health coach and a confidence curator. I love that name, by the way, and a wellness expert for actors. So tell me about how that journey even came about. Were you like the go-to person, go-to friend everybody came to for advice or something? Well, it came out of my own just not taking care of myself and treating my body like crap and, you know, thinking I was doing, you know, the right things of, Ooh, non-fat, fat free processed fake food. You know, I was really addicted to diet culture as a lot of us are. I mean, it's a multi gazillion dollar industry that is here designed to make us feel bad about ourselves, you know? And so I was very kind of stuck in that, uh, diet culture. And I had booked a very big job that took me to Atlanta. And I had always also working on a film here in Los Angeles. So I had to fly back and forth, I think four times in the span of three weeks. Mm. And I got deathly ill. And, you know, it was because I think, you know, I just, my immune system wasn't up. I wasn't taking great care of myself. I did some crazy cleanse before I even traveled. Cause I'm like, Ooh, I gotta, gotta get snatched. I gotta, yeah, I gotta get skinny. And it's just uh, such that mentality, which is so, it's just so ingrained in us that, and it's just not productive. And obviously, you know, I literally remember I'm standing across from the series regular <laughs> who all of my scenes were with. And I couldn't hear myself. I sounded like I was completely underwater. And I thought I I could completely blow this right now. Like I just, and by the way, the makeup gal was totally looking out for me. <laughs> she really helped me because you would never know that I was sick when you watch the episode, but I was so sick. And I just thought, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like I, I can't. I can't go like do these crazy cleanses and detoxes and, you know, diets and all this stuff. I was like, I need to learn what is best for my body and how to really be in, you know, in sync with this. And so I actually sought out my own health coach and just did that journey. And then eventually um, I thought, Man, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very grown up. I'm, I'm older, you know, I was just like, and if I knew then what I know now, I would have saved myself so much trauma. And so that's where, when I was on Nashville is actually when I was getting my health coaching certification and my life coaching certification. And I thought, well, this is, I want to do this for my community because we're just, you know, we're so we're taught all these things that just aren't true. (laughs) And you guys, you can comment in the, make sure you use the comments, whether you're watching it now or the replay. Um, I believe we're we're taught kind of how to survive, you know, it's like gig to gig. Right. And we all joke like, oh gosh, I'm on set. I'm eating all this crap. I don't need to eat it. Or just, it's the, it's the crash diets. It's things Mm -hmm. that we just feel like we need to do before we get there. Mm -hmm. I mean, even whether you're on working on camera or even in the theater, I mean, I, I, Shout out to, you know, many of my dancer friends, like eight shows a week, you know, I mean, you've got to have stamina and the thing with the diet culture and it's like, it's the diet industry, the plastic surgery industry, our food industry, you know, and it's the industry that we are in too, that sort of has this thinking that somehow smaller is better and it's just not. (laughs) And I just want to stress to everybody right now that your self-worth has absolutely nothing to do with how you look on the outside. You know, but if you do want to feel your best so you can bring the very best of yourself to everything you do, it does start with making your health and wellness like top priority. When well, before we came on live, you guys, you know, Monica and I were um, talking and just talking shop and we were talking about you guys are, are used to me saying be ready be ready for the thing that you're praying for you know you've been praying for this are you ready do you have your memorization do you have your your whole rinse and repeat process to run your lines to create your character but what we were talking about offline was do are you ready for what it takes physically for the jet set life i'm like, like listen beyonce she may have assistance but 
Beyonce got to keep it together for Beyonce to do. Beyonce is always my go-to, by the way. But Beyonce, yeah, but it's true. In I mean, order to pull that off. What she has to do, you guys, I mean, she trained for a year for Coachella. A year. <laughs> I mean, you guys, that is no effing joke. It's like, so I always say acting is when preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. So are you prepared when the time comes? I mean, we spend so much time, energy, headspace, you know, on classes, photos, real footage, trying to get great reps, rehearsing, networking, that we often forget that one of the most parts of parts of preparation is making sure that we are truly taking care of our instrument. Right. And I'm talking the stamina that this career takes. And I'm not talking about just in the pursuit of, because that takes stamina, but the stamina it takes when you actually get the job. Like what I was talking about, like once if you have to fly back and forth eight times in a month, mm -hmm. you know, once if when you get on a job, you have five night shoots, you know, in a row, like, are you prepared to, you know, stay up all night? <laughs> And still give your best work. Like you have to be in top physical condition to really be able to do that and give your best work. Because it is just a hard fact of this industry that how we look, whatever amazing way that is, your energy and your mood are huge parts of booking any job. Yeah, I mean, there's, and for those of you with different dietary restrictions, or if you have, if you're diabetic, or like if you have thyroid issues, like all that stuff like comes into play for even being on your feet, not being able to eat exactly what you want. You know, I think about that. And I think that is the, and y'all can tell me if I'm wrong, use the comments. That's it's the last thing we're thinking about. We're just trying to get the, the gig. Yeah. Yeah. We're not, how do I sustain in this? Yeah. And I would also say, if you can, if you could speak on it, I mean, Health for us is so, as actors, is important. But for me, I'll be honest, like when I'm on set, I'm everything I, unless I'm, unless I'm major recurring or series regular on a show, it's hard for me to find a rhythm. So maybe you can talk about this. It's hard for me to find the rhythm because I'm afraid to eat or drink certain things because mm. you don't need to be the one holding up this production, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it's like you're trying to be healthy and keep it simple, but try not to just lean to, to what's quick and what's crap. Yeah. I mean, talk about that. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I mean, I will speak to this one part is that here's the thing. So many actors and performers, we just miss that fundamental link between feeling our best sort of free of all of those symptoms that a lot of us just live with, right? Like brain fog, low energy, digestive issues, bad skin, constipation, like all of that stuff that we're like, oh, no, big, you know, that's just like how I feel that we miss that fundamental link between feeling our best and performing our best, right? Mm -hmm. If you're really only operating at like 60%, even if you don't think that you are, <laughs> there is no way that you are performing at 100%. You're just not. I agree. So that's the first thing. And and our instrument, to your point, like our instrument, this is like one of the very few things we actually have control over in this industry is how we, what we are doing with this. And we are hired for our entire instrument, right? Not just our talent. It's everything. It's including your stamina, your energy, your vibe, you know, all of that stuff. And everything you put into your body can do one of two things. It can either elevate you, give you a focused, consistent energy, help you like with real clarity, you know, like clear minded, all that stuff. Or it can literally sap your energy, make it hard to remember lines, give you, right. you know, give you more nerves and stuff. And that comes from not nourishing yourself properly, right? Like I said, everything you put into your body can do one of two things. It's either going to elevate you or it's going to bring you down. So when you're on set, luckily, thank God, you know, the sets are changing in how they're feeding us now. Like one of my clients literally just sent me a, po a picture and she goes, you have completely changed my life. And she had like a kale smoothie in her hand. She's like, I never knew that. You know, I'm always, I'm always the person like, do they have, I'm so busy. Do, do they have juice juices? Like I don't have to press or clean the juicer. Yeah, exactly. 
what do you do now? She said she got like an immunity shot. And then she also got a kale and, you know, kale smoothie, kale banana, like strawberry smoothie. And, you know, they have so many more healthy choices now because they have to, you know, now granted, if you're doing an indie film, you know, or something like that, where they don't have the budget for that kind of stuff, I do really encourage you to ask for what you need. Mm -hmm. You know, tell them what you need. And also, like, don't be ashamed of bringing your own stuff, too. You guys, I've got a soft cooler that goes with me to set if I'm worried. You know? Yeah. Listen, Monica, you don't know this about me, y'all. You don't know. I'm greedy. <laughs> I'm greedy and I'm picky. Mm -hmm. and I love to eat. Yeah. And I love to eat well. And I hate putting the fate of my food into someone else's mm -hmm. hand especially yeah. when I do want to eat healthy. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, oh, what's healthy to me, my choice. And I will say now post post pandemic, you know, you don't have as much option to just make your salad how you want and all like things are so packaged so much differently. Yeah. But before, you know, those of you listening, this isn't just a how to make healthy smoothies talk, you know, yeah. Monica and I really, I just, that just came up for me because Again, it kind of stems with how we sustain ourselves throughout a shoot or being on set or being on, in the theater. But, you know, you and I were talking about routines. Yes. And, you know, I, I believe I'm a high achiever. I've taken those tests where I'm like, yeah, I'm a high achiever. Like, you know, I wake up early and yep. like to do a lot in the morning. And those of you who've read the book Miracle Morning, you're like, you know, meditate, write, yes. try, do all these things. So as actors, you know, why are rituals and routines? I mean, I feel like we have rituals and routines as we're creating characters. So yes. can you talk about how that correlates? Yeah. I mean, hopefully you do, right? <laughs> that's part of it. And that's mm -hmm. why I think rituals and routines are so important. Like creating powerful rituals and routines can help us with literally everything in our lives. And most, and the most important being managing our mind. Mm. Right. I think it's super important to start su super important to start there because your mindset has the greatest ability for you to integrate like anything you're learning or trying to shift. Right. Right. So, you know, it's creating a magical morning, for example, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, because I can sit here and tell you we can. You know, Christine, I could tell you all day long, you need to drink water, you need to take better care of yourself, you need to do this, that, whatever. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I tell you because unless you start managing your mind, it's the number one thing that holds most people back from creating a life, career, relationships, and everything that we truly love. And I think the best way to start managing your mind is by creating rituals and routines, right? Like magical morning. So give me, give me some examples. Now, those of you listening, and again, if you're, if you need to come back or you need to check this out later, uh, Monica has given a link uh, before, if anybody has to go, the link that you shared, are you giving us some samples of some? No, it's a full guide. It's called, it's my, um, it's called the magical morning guide. And okay. so it's a guide to help you create your magical morning, your own magical morning, you know, whatever that will look like for you. It's going to explain, you know, how to create your space, give you a whole menu of different things you can do and really, really tell like goes deep into how creating this morning ritual can really just, it's, it's going to create a ripple effect through your entire life. Okay. So those of you who are listening on the podcast, what's the website for it? Oh, if you go to just Monica Plant Wellness, and my name is spelled M O N I Q U A P L A N T E wellness.com, and you go to start here, there's a whole bunch of resources there for you. But we also do have the link here in, um, in the Facebook group and things like that. But for those of you listening, go to my website, go to the start here tab, and there's a ton of great resources, including the Magical Morning Guide. Those of you who are watching live, I want you in the comments and I want to hear from you. Where is a, what is a place in the morning where you're struggling? Like what is something that you wish you could, uh, could shift or adjust what you're doing in the morning? Put that in the comments and I'll make sure I come to you. But Monica, in the meantime, can you give me an, an example of an area that felt wonky for you as, as an artist 
and what kind of ritual that you, did you add to your morning time uh, that helped you? Like, what was there? A, are you approaching this from I feel blocked in this way in this particular space, or I just need to make sure I'm taken care of before I go to work or before I go to auditions? You know, it's kind of both because okay. I feel that for me, I wanted to open up the flow in my life is that I was feeling just like come back, you know, butting my head a little bit with okay. things. And I think creating a morning ritual and a nighttime ritual really, really helps you. I, I think creating a morning ritual literally is a recipe for how you are going to show up in the rest of your day. Right. And just even if it's five minutes, I know a lot of people are not morning people and I was not one of those people, but now like you, I get up early. I wake up before my alarm. You know, I'm getting up at 6.30, 6.45 because I want to have that extra time in the morning so I am not rushed. I could take the time to do whatever I want to do because I don't just do the same thing every time. I think it's important. Oh, examples. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Mix up your rituals a little bit. I think it's really important. Things like meditation, okay. journaling, breath work, a really robust gratitude practice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, reading uplifting books, mm -hmm. listening to uplifting music, uh, uplifting podcasts, and just reconnecting, you know, with my instrument. So, you know, some of those podcasts could be about acting. They could be about craft. Some of those books I'm reading could be about that. You know, my meditation could be mantra based where I'm looking to call things into my life. Um, my gratitude practice is, you know, very robust because I really, really strongly believe that gratitude reciprocates right. and really digging into that. So the journaling could be writing down the things you're grateful for and then digging into one of them in particular and writing down why you're grateful for it. Like, what is it doing for you? A few people in the chat are saying just waking up is hard. Like wow. rolling out of bed is, is can be a rough spot. That's what's happening here. When, when I'm, hey, uh, thank you, Ursula. I, I appreciate you uh, saying that comment. It makes me think of Mel Robbins. I should, those of you who haven't read the five second rule, you should totally read it or put it on your audio mm -hmm. book. That five, four, three, two, one, just get up, right? That's yeah. how, it's easier said than done. I'll say that. Here's the thing. <laughs> well, if your morning is just, and I get a lot of you guys have kids. I do address that in the magical morning guide. You know, because a lot of people are like their kids are waking them up or, you know, whatever you do have to then that's something maybe you talk with your partner about. A lot of my clients have now made agreements with their partner that like their partner takes the, you know, does the morning thing with the kid. My morning routines, you know, especially when I worked a nine to five. So shout out to those of you who are still working your nine to five, your five to 10, whenever you're working, you know, for me, I had to have this thing. If I had to be at work at 8 a.m., I had a thing like I refuse to give my employer all my time and I get nothing. And I understood that most times by the time I got off work, I was exhausted. And I had no, by the time I came home, sat in trap, you know, sat in traffic, came home, cooked dinner, ate dinner. Don't let me have a glass of wine. I'm done. Like it's a wrap. So for me, I had to find time in the morning. And so it wasn't very stringent. Like it had to be an hour or anything like that. I did Miracle Morning. Those of you who have that book. But I also just, for me, it was just like, wake up an hour before you need to start getting ready so that I could take my time and leisurely be with myself, make a cup of tea, read some. I always read personal development stuff in the morning. For me, honestly, nothing about acting really because I needed like just to get my mind together. And then just be able, be able to be leisurely. Like that was the only time I had for me before I went to work. So for those of you who are still working your day jobs, it's like paying yourself first. You hear about the automatic millionaire, right? That book where you pay yourself first. You know, it is about making sure I got to put in, to make deposits into me before anybody else got me. Um, hey, Monica, I was just talking about paying myself first in the morning when I used to have yeah. a day job and how important that just was for me before anyone got the rest of my day mm -hmm. that I paid myself first in some way. And so Absolutely. what I'm hearing is that like, because here's the thing too, especially for those of you, whether COVID, it's, COVID is a weird time right now, but if you're still working for someone else, which many of you are, right? And no shame in that. It's nope. like, before they get all of your energy, 
You got to pay yourself first. And don't forget your goal is, this is why I don't hold pens. Cause I'd be like, and what you need to know is, <laughs> what you need to know is also you working your day job or your night job doesn't make you any less an actor, but you do have to give it the attention it needs. So which mm-hmm. means you do in, in, integrate these morning rituals, mm-hmm. your nighttime rituals, your studying, your personal development, because you ain't going to be in that job that long or mm-hmm. not longer because that's not the big picture. So I think I want to just, I'm, I'm dropping that note here for you too, into your brain to, to not be like, well, I'm not there yet. You have to start operating from the place you desire. Yeah, to. And absolutely. what I'm hearing Monica talk about and correct me if I'm wrong is what can I create in my life now? What systems, what mm-hmm. rituals can I create to produce greatness? To absolutely. Well, well, you kind of said it as we mentioned it a little bit with like mindlessness is not an option when you want to create meaningful change, right? You have to stay awake to the choices you're making if you want to create what you want in your life, right? And if it's really that hard for you to get up in the morning, then what is your night looking like? Like, what are you doing at night? You know, is it, do you just need- In the club, yeah. drinking? Yeah, like exactly. Like none of us are out partying right now. So what are you doing? Like, this is the best time to start creating- that like nighttime routine that's going to get your ass in bed, you know, like turn off the electronics, you know, turn off the TV, turn off the electronics, like create a nighttime routine. So you're actually getting to bed earlier. You could do your gratitude practice before you go to bed, you know, turn the lights down, like create a space that is, you know, inviting sleep in, right? Like don't stay up on your phone, doom scrolling, you know, and watching TV till midnight. If you're trying to get up at seven, you know? Oh, can we pause right there? Mm-hmm. And I know we're all, I'm giving y'all the eye because you know, we're all guilty of this. Mm-hmm. That whole scroll before bed is not even healthy for the, for the night no. beyond the lights and the tech, just all the stuff you're taking in about other people's lives and what they have and you don't. And mm-hmm. Taking all that in before you go to bed, that time right before you go to sleep and that time right when you wake up is the most precious time, period. Yeah. This, that is where you get to do mind control. And I mean, yeah. because something is controlling your mind. Now you get to decide what it's going to be. Is it going to be an outside source or will it be the source? Mm, I love that. Oh, that's so so true. I was like, I love that. No, but it's so true because like, again, how you, how you are ending your day and how you are starting your day are so, so important. I especially think for the life of an artist, right? Like if you're going to bed and you're like doom scrolling or you're watching some, you know, trashy TV or whatever, literally that's what's in your brain when you're going to sleep versus if you're listening to, you know, an uplifting podcast or writing in your journal or doing just something really nice for yourself, like stretching, you know, having dimming the lights, lighting some candles, like listening to a cool book on tape, you know, giving your body some, uh, you know, attention it needs, whether it's stretching, you know, whatever it is. It's like, I just think those time, that time is so important. You're setting your up for success. There's right. Something, there's something that you mentioned um, when we were talking about because some people may be listening and may be thinking, okay, I can wake up early, have tea or coffee. Okay, I'll light a candle, read a little bit. Oh, okay. But you said something about thinking about what aspects of your life do you need to pay attention to or do you want to give more yeah. attention to? Can you talk a little bit about how we can do a bit more exploration in that? Um, and maybe what kind of thing, what kind of ritual, what kind of activity that's mm-hmm. deep? Because especially if it's in the morning, is you're not a morning person, like what that might look like to go deep yeah. at work? Absolutely. Well, I do think that like daily, weekly, seasonal rituals really help you carve out time for the things that matter most. Right. And I know it seems counterintuitive, but I will say this that the more time and space you actually carve out for yourself the more time and space you will have to call in the things that matter the most to you, 
right? When you're giving yourself more time and space, it actually breathes more time and space into your day. Cause then you're not operating on that. Like go, 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 go all or nothing sort of thing. So I think that, you know, if you've never done a core values exercise, I think this, where this is a place where that really comes in, you know, your if self-care creativity, being a compassionate person, relationships, like if these are some of your core values, then and you can do rituals and routines that sort of then support those those core values, right? If creativity is one of your core values, then you gotta ha- you're gonna have to carve out time to be creative, yeah. right? So maybe that's like you have writing time set aside, like that is the time that you write. Maybe it's planning an artist date. Do you guys, you know, for anybody who's read The Artist Way, oh, there's yeah. a whole thing on like doing an artist date every Sunday, right? You know, maybe having weekly healthy, you know, cooking time with your family, you know, with your kids. If these, you know, if your family, if family is one of your top priorities, one of your top core values. I also think that by definition, rituals are very, nur- they're nourishing routines, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas habits can be healthy or unhealthy, right? But ritual, like routines are more nourishing, right? Because we carry, I think we kind of carry purpose and awareness into our routines, right? And so there's lots of different things you can do, right? In my magical morning guide, I give you a lot of different things, but I do have like a whole list of how you can do it. Here's the thing. Rituals, I think, are most meaningful when they're self-chosen instead of, say, enforced by a culture or even a religion. So like I said, first, take a moment to identify your core values. I think that's a huge, huge way for you to then look through that lens of whether everything you're doing in your life is supporting the things that are most important to you, yeah. right? And if you don't know what those are, this will be a really amazing exercise for you. Next, I think, think about how you can turn those desires into actions, right? Like given your circumstances, like what kind of practical steps could you take to strengthen your body, boost your happiness, bring more adventure and creativity into your life, you know, and then get super, super specific, get very specific about what you're going to do and when you're going to do it, right? Like you're going to be much more likely to create a really empowering morning ritual when you plan to get up earlier and give yourself the time, right? Like if you plan, like I'm going to get up at 6.30, I'm going to make myself a coffee or a matcha. I'm going to do a series of sun salutations and or stretches. I'm going to read a chapter in a specific book. I'm going to, you know, something like that. You know what I mean? Where you're just specific. What I'm hearing is intention. Let me, I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to say. Listen, if you think you're going to feel like it, Mm -mm. honey, that cover, that, that couch, that, that comforter is going to be like, especially Especially during the winter time. Oh yeah. I thought I was going to know. Is it, aren't you cozy? Yes. I don't want to get that. <laughs> totally. The intention is so important, Christine. So this is what I'm saying. So even if like carving out that time in the morning is kind of not your jam and you're like, how am I going to do it? Start small, right? You guys, we're not going to do every all of this overnight. It's not going to happen. It's the same reason why diets don't work. And it's the same reason resolutions don't work because they're not dealing with the, the underlying behavior that sort of gets us there in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a goal thing. So start small, start with waking up five minutes early and doing five really deep belly breaths, right? Like breathing super deep into your belly all the way to the top, breathe as much air in as you can, and then take another sip of air and then let out a big sigh. Like it will change how you feel just doing something that simple while you're doing it. Think of an intention. I always do this every morning. I do d- deep belly breaths and at least I'll be like, how do I want to feel today? And how do I want my day to go? Mm-hmm. So I come up with like one to three sort of words that sort of describe those things, how I want to feel and how I want to move through my day. Right. Have fun with it. Right. Yeah. It could be like, oh my gosh, I just want my day to feel in flow. Right. I just want to be in flow. It's going to be easy and effortless. And 
I'm going to be really open to like whatever magic the universe has for me today. Yeah. And it's that thing of set the expectation, everybody. It's like, I will look for ways to be happy and I will find, mm-hmm. yes. I expect to find, to feel jo- peace today. Mm-hmm. I expect yeah. to have this today. I expect to, you know, I think it's that, you know, I think at the end of the day, what before you can do any of this, I don't want any of this to feel like work. And I know you no. Attention, yeah. Monica. Yeah. Um, and again, if you're just joining us, you're watching late. Monica has a link you can get grab, and she'll walk you through a lot of things. Especially if you're feeling stuck and you don't have a routine for yourself. Mm-hmm. Tons of ideas is in the link above or below this thing. If you're listening to the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. But I don't want it to feel like work. Remember, this is just it's taking care of you. This is just yeah. the part that we don't always get to talk about. It's like self tape class, and do you have a backdrop? Pause your ring light. Get the ring light eye uh, light at your eyes. Like, wait, can I just breathe? Before I even start, yeah. okay? just breathe. breathe. I want to share something with you guys before we get ready to wrap. And if you have any questions or thoughts, please throw them in the chat. We talked about the artist way. It's a you know been around for you know decades, and I'm actually in a group doing it now. And some of my clients are doing it too. But I want to share something from page 96. Um, and this is where she's talking about the virtue trap. This is week five. An artist must have downtime, time to do nothing. Defending our right to such time takes courage, conviction, and resiliency. Such time, space, and quiet will strike our family and friends as withdrawal withdrawal from them. It is. And then I'm going to hop to page 97. We are the ones making unreasonable demands. We expect our artists to be able to function without giving it what it needs to do so. Mm -hmm. This requires the upkeep of creative solitude. An artist requires the healing of time alone. And that I had to underline, highlight, tag it because I'm a busy bee, right? Mm-hmm. I'm business, coaching, acting, wife, <laughs> daddy mama. Like, yeah. and it's like, y'all, how can we be the artists, the creatives that we want to be if we're not even taking the time to check in? Yeah. And the reason why I'm drawn to what you're sharing, Monica, and why I'm personally drawn to rituals, because I have my own in the morning, is because they work. And when I I honor myself first, I'm I'm just a much nicer person, Monica. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's true for everyone. Like, it's a way for you to connect, reconnect to you. And like I said, even if it's just five minutes. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour. I mean, if you end up getting that, then more power to you. Amazing. But like, start with five minutes, start with one minute, you know, five deep deli- belly breaths and taking, you know, setting an intention for your day. That's less than a minute. Yeah. You know, but you got to start like carving these times out too, because it's also time for you to reconnect with like, what do you really want? What's really important to you, you know, start writing out like your living vision of how you see your life unfolding. You know, these are times you can do stuff like that. Yeah. You know, when else are you going to do it? Like this is the time in your evening and in your mornings to carve out that time for you as a creative being for you as a human being. Cause like you said, Christine, it will make you a better person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Denise, Denise Armstrong said, we are the ones making unrealistic demands light bulb moment. I'm so glad. Mm-hmm. That resonated. Yes. It resonated with me too. I was like, yes. Yeah. And it's like, I get so full because we know there's so much business to this show business. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Yeah. Right. And pr- no producer, director, writer, casting director, agent, manager is going to tell you to do this work. Like this is what you have to do to sustain and, and mm-hmm. make sure are a healthy, a healthy human, um, and help, and, and you're bringing good energy. And if you're not taking care of yourself first, you're not going to be able to just show up in the way you want to show up. Exactly. Um, and I look at you, Monica, you just, you have a beautiful, you just have a glow, you have a brightness <laughs> and a light to you. And so I want to make sure that if anyone is listening, watching and resonating with you and wants to, uh, figure out how to connect with you. What is it that actors come to you for out of curiosity? Like what is your, like people come to me to book more TV. Why do yeah. you do? You know, I think that's the ultimate goal. <laughs> you figure that out? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think ultimately, like as actors and creative beings, like we want to work more, yeah. you know. But I think people are starting to realize, like, if you can't be right in here you're not going to get what you want out there, you know? And like I said, all of those things that we truly want, right? The love, the money, the success, the opportunities, the experiences, the bookings, the, the life, you know, that we truly love, all of that stuff, none of it grows in a toxic environment, which our mind and our body can absolutely be without real care and direction. And so that's where I step in, you know, so, you know, people come to me, yes, to lose weight, but that's not really, I'm not a weight loss coach. I don't approach it from that. I, I come from it. Like, let's get you to a place where you are literally bringing the best of yourself to everything that you do, you know, and that's by finding this, getting reconnected with this, where you're like doing everything with intention. Yeah, You know, there's more awareness around everything. It's not like you're doing, like I said, this all or nothing sort of thing, because I always remind people, if you're in that perfectionist mode, that all or nothing mindset, you will always end up with nothing because we can't do it all. Yeah. So I just help people sort of figure out what works best for them in all those areas. I start with this, right? And then we work outward. And it's pretty fantastic. Like a lot, like to see the shifts, like it just, as like, just like with you, when your clients are, you know, are booking work and, you know, feeling good, like, it's just so freaking rewarding, you know, to see my clients just glowing. Like, and then they start attracting all of those things that we're talking about. They start attracting more opportunities, more bookings, more love, money, success you know, all of those things that we want because they're right in here. They're connected. They're grounded. It's so interesting. We're going to wrap in a second, but the work starts within for Mm -hmm. our personal lives and as we create characters. Absolutely. It all starts in here. Mm -hmm. And I always say like, that's what I kept saying. Like people don't realize like the few, one of the only things we actually have control over is this. Yeah. Right. And it's, and it's the work that we do here. That's the work. It's how we bring it to the world. Right. It's, it's our vibe, our essence, like that's, what's going to fill up a character. Right. We can only do that when we are doing it at a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, so if you're not just feeling good, then we got to get you feeling good. We got to get you into those habits and rituals and routines where you're just taking excellent care of yourself. So then you are bringing the very best of yourself to everything you do. And let me tell you that confidence that just shows through everything, everything. And you become a magnet. You really do. You know that. I don't know anything about magnets. I don't know anything. I know. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I'm talking about. You become a magnet for the things that you want to call in. Absolutely. Gosh, Monica, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Um, thank you all who are watching live. I appreciate you all and all the good energy in the comments. At the end of the day, the core the core theme here is take care of yourself. Yes. And, and yes, that is selfish. And there's nothing wrong with that. Before we can give to our families and our kids and our, and our characters, we have to take care of us first. Yes. So, this um, is our job. Yes. This is our job. Absolutely. So be sure to click the link above or below to grab Monica's morning ritual guide. Um, She'll walk you through some of some of those things. Um, And if you're if you missed any part of this and want to catch the replay, it'll replay in a second. And if you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube, I thank you, Monica. It's a pleasure. Again, um, just for the sake of audio, can you say what your Instagram handle is? Because I know a lot of Of people are on Instagram. Of course, everything is at Monica Plant or at Monica Plant Wellness. My first name is M-O-N-I-Q-U-A. My last name is P-L-A-N-T-E. And it's at Monica Plant or at Monica Plant Wellness across the board. Fabulous. Well, I'm wishing you, Monica, amazing success, blessings, book and energy this new, this pilot season. Uh, you all too. Go ahead and go back and binge Nashville season three now that you know who Monica is. 
<laughs> oh, but this is your first time watching this and you're new to the Hollywood Bound Actors community. This is something that I like to do often. I have some more exciting guests coming up in the next several months. So stay tuned. My goal is to always offer you um, inspirational stories from actors who are in the trenches just like you and who are doing interesting things. And you might find inspiration there along the way. Um, if you enjoy this, make sure you give it a like, a thumbs up, comment. Let me know that you're here. Um, don't You don't have to be shy. You can say hi to me. I'll say hi back. Um, <laughs> and uh, if, if you're also new to me, we have a YouTube channel. Um, and the show is called Actors Daily Bread. There's almost 300 episodes on there. So even those of you who are like, Christine, I can't afford to work with you right now. Like you have YouTube, 300 something videos. Knock yourself out. Vince, Christine, and chill. That's, that's, that's <laughs> Christine and chill. And that's this, uplifting. Do yeah. some uplifting stuff like that. Yes. And this video, this interview will be on the YouTube channel very soon. Have an amazing night, everybody. Thank you for being here. Monica, hang around. Everybody have I a good will. night. Thanks, Bye -bye. everyone.